Okay, so tonight, in tonight's uh, mindfulness, midweek mindfulness session, I thought I'd talk about patience. Uh, so patience is another attitude of our practice. And it's important to recognize um, the difficulty that comes with just trying to maintain calmness. You can't really maintain calmness 24-7. It's not really possible. Our, our bodies and our brains are not set up to do that. So trying to develop this calmness does require a fair bit of patience. And you do need to allow things to unfold. Um, in fact, I had one person tell me or ask me once what Buddhism is all about. And it reminded me of what I heard years and years ago from um, a Tibetan monk who said that Buddhism is to unfold. Nothing more than that. Uh, so I sort of think calmness and patience is something you can use just to watch life unfold, just to see what's going to happen next. It requires a connection with our calm inner core and also some courage. Patience requires a degree of kindness and compassion, both to yourself and to the environment around you. So patience is a form of wisdom, which we can cultivate when we practice mindfulness. It helps us learn to let go of the need to control things and be open to this moment. So the needing to control things is something that's going to bring us suffering because obviously we can't control everything. There's plenty of things in life we can't control. And sometimes the things that are even within our control for that moment aren't. Uh, so we get a little bit um, anxious in some way or we sort of long for it to be other than what it is. And that brings us, you know, stress or suffering. So developing patience to just let things run their course, to wait for an opportunity when we can get back into a bit of control or to sort of have the wisdom to know when things are outside of our control and to just to let them be. Okay, so that's probably enough of me talking. So there's the first two attitudinal foundations of practice, non-judging and patience. And as I said, um, we try to bring those attitudes to our practice of mindfulness and also our practice of mindfulness helps develop those attitudes. So it's kind of a spiral thing that the more we do and the more we bring, the more we're going to get uh, and it starts growing. Okay, so with that, let's do a little bit of mindful practice. And throughout this next sort of 20 minutes or so of mindful practice, just keep an, keep an eye on times that you feel you are patient and times you feel you losing that patience a little bit. So just maybe on, on the side, just have a little patience monitor going up and down, checking in on your, your level of patience. Okay, so I'll ask you to get into a sort of comfortable position, whether it be seated or on the floor, on a cushion, or you may even lie down. The risk of lying down is that you'll fall asleep. But however is more comfortable for you, depending on your uh, physical needs. If you are sitting, Try to have your back as straight as reasonably possible, nice and tall, without being too rigid or strict. You might want to even sway a little bit forwards and back to try to find that perfect balance point over your hips, maybe left and right, because what we want to do is align our shoulders with our hips, and then we tuck our chin in a little tiny bit, and imagine a piece of string pulling the crown of our head upwards so that our ears are also over our shoulders and we have one sort of straight line down our ears, shoulders, hips. Let your arms just fall naturally, placing your hands in your lap. You can cradle one hand in the other or you can just let them fall on your thighs or on your knees. Wherever is most comfortable for you and not placing too much sort of pull or hang on your shoulders. If you're seated in a chair, your feet, try to put them flat on the floor. 
about hip width apart. And if you're sitting cross leg, then however cross leg is comfortable for you, but try to get your knees lower than your hips. That allows your pelvic area to tilt forward, uh, and that's a lot more comfortable for sitting longer than when your knees are up above your hips and causing your, your pelvis to tilt backwards. It's more comfortable on the lower spine. And you can either keep your eyes open with a soft focus on nothing in particular just in front of you, or let your eyes close. And now that we are seated in that position, we'll go through a body scan. So bringing our attention to our feet, try to focus all of our attention as we can into our feet. Try to isolate each individual toe and moving our body, our focus of our body up to the whole of our feet, up to our ankles. So here we're looking at all of our feet, all ten toes, so both feet, both ankles, everything below our ankles. Try to bring all of that into our awareness and just check in those with our feet. They work very hard for us all day long. Check in, see if they're cold or warm, maybe a little sweaty. We might even bring a little bit of gratitude towards our feet for working so hard for us throughout the day. And when you're ready, move your attention up to your lower legs, to your calves, and your shins. Just check in there too. Notice any pain or any sensations at all. Maybe you might notice some clothes touching your skin. Moving up to our knees and around our knees up to our upper legs, our thighs, and our hamstrings. And here we might check in and feel whatever is supporting us, the chair, the cushion, the floor. You might be more aware of clothes on this area. Now moving on up to our hips, their whole pelvic area. Just seeing if it's relaxed, any pain or tension. Just watching it for a moment with new curious observation. And now expand your area of focus to be all that we've just covered. So revisiting the whole of our lower body from our hips all the way down to our feet. Just expand your focus to include all of those. Let them relax. Let them settle. Quick check in on your patients. Now let's move our focus to our lower torso, so our stomach, our spine, lower part of our spine, lower back, and even our side muscles. You might just check in here for any pain. Are we sitting upright enough, or maybe too much? Have we got enough support of our lower back? Is our hips tilted forwards?
might even be some noises here in our lower torso. How does your stomach feel? Is it full from a beautiful, delicious dinner? Or is it still waiting in anticipation for dinner after this? Moving on up our torso now, let's turn our attention to our chest, to our rib cage, our upper chest, our shoulder blades and our spine, that whole upper half of our torso. We might just watch and wait for a few breaths, watch our ribs move. Check in for any pain, any coldness or tingling, or is it just beautiful and content and relaxed? Let's hope it's that one. Moving up to our shoulders now, let's pull our shoulders back a tiny little bit not too much, just opening ourselves up a little bit, pull our shoulder blades together at the back, just a fraction, and drop our shoulders down with relaxation. Moving down to our upper arms, biceps and triceps, down to our elbows as well, just let them fall naturally, and let's observe them a little bit, how are they feeling, And let's continue moving down to our lower arms, our forearms, and on down to our wrists. And now moving on down to our hands. And if it feels appropriate for you, approach our hands again with a little bit of gratitude because they work hard for us also. Holding and lifting and carrying and pushing and writing and scratching. All the things we take for granted. So let's check in with our hands, our fingers, our thumbs. See if they're relaxed with a little bit of gratitude. Just let them fall naturally into your lap or on your knees. Let your fingers curl naturally. And now let's gently broaden our focus of awareness to include all of our arms, from our fingernails right up to our shoulders. Just focus in, visualize, imagine our arms beautifully contented, hanging softly by our sides. Now gently lifting our awareness up to our head, starting at the back of our head, moving up to our crown, where we imagine we're being pulled gently towards the sky to tilt our head forward ever so slightly. As we come over the top of our head and down our forehead, we may need to deliberately relax our forehead just a little. Let our brow soften, 
eyebrows fall. Same with your eyes. Just let them soften and relax. Deliberately let them calm and slow. Moving down our nose, visualizing our nose, our top lip, bottom lip, both of them gently touching. You can even put on your lips a tiny little Mona Lisa smile. Because that tiny little smile brings in energy, brings in a bit of gratitude. And our tongue is resting behind our top teeth. And our chin is tucked in ever so slightly. From here we will turn our attention to our breath. So what we just completed there was what we call a body scan. And you can keep body scanning up and down, up and down for as long as you wish. Or you can use it as an introduction to a different type of mindfulness practice because it really brings us into our body. The body scan really brings us into the here and the now, what we're feeling, what we're experiencing. So we'll do that, we'll turn to a different technique now of watching our breath. So here just turn your attention to your body breathing. You may focus on your nose, you may focus on your throat, if you can feel the air in some way moving up and down your throat, you can focus on your chest rising and falling, or on your belly rising and falling. Wherever you feel the focus is easier or softer, it's completely up to you. I follow my belly rising and falling. But what we're not doing is controlling our breath. We're just letting our body breathe the way it has done for years. Non-judgmentally, with patience. What you might notice is it now that you're watching your breath, it is naturally slowing down a little. If you would like, you may extend your breath a little, just a little, just a little deeper, a little longer. For one or two breaths, And then just let your body take over and breathe by itself without any interference from you. And finally, I invite you to broaden your focus of awareness to your entire body from toes to crown to nose to fingertips 
and watch your entire body breathe. Almost like you're having an out of body experience. Watch yourself sitting or lying, breathing, slowly, calmly, peacefully. If your mind wanders away from watching your body breathe, non-judgmentally, with as much patience as you can muster, slowly bring it back to your body. If you need to move or attend to something, do it mindfully, do it deliberately, make it part of your practice, bring it into your focus, you move that leg deliberately with patience and non-judgment or scratch that itch mindfully, patiently, and then return to watching your body breathe. So in your own time, when you're ready, you might want to wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes, maybe stretch a little and bring your focus back from your body back to me. But before we say anything else, just check in. How are you feeling? How is your level of patience? How is your level of contentment? Is there something in that practice that you will use, could use, could make your own, could adapt? All these skills are yours now to do with as you wish. 
there's no real right or wrong on following these skills, following these practices. I would say that the more you do them, the better you will get at them. And with that, uh, the more patience you will develop, the more non-judgment will grow, the more calmness will grow. The gap between that stimulus and response, as in when someone cuts you off on the road and you start yelling at them and get all angry, that gap between stimulus and response will grow. And maybe one day you'll catch yourself. And you'll go, I don't need to yell at them. They can't hear me anyway. And maybe they're on their way to the hospital where someone they love is in trouble. So I'll just let them be, let them go on their way. And that is as much a gift to them as it is to you. Because you won't suffer the the heat and the anger of yelling and screaming and getting frustrated. So while the practice of mindfulness is many and varied, um, it is something that we all know has a kind of dose effect. One little bit falls on top of another little bit and another little bit and another little bit. So doing a something mindfully every single day is far more powerful than trying to go on a, a four-month retreat every five years. <laughs> so tonight we just covered a body scan. We did a little bit of breath mindfulness. And then we sort of combined the two where we sat and watched our body breathe. And throughout that I talked a bit about patience and non-judgment. So if anybody has any questions or comments or requests, uh, now's the time. Or you can send them to me in the comments section on Facebook. But I'll be here next Wednesday night at 8pm if anybody wants to join me and spread the word. Tell your friends, family, anybody who you think might benefit. Fantastic. Thank you, Jeff. That was great. All right. You're welcome, Kelly. Thanks for joining me again. Good night. Good night. Did you have something you thank wanted to ask, Kelly? Yeah, thank you very much. I really, um, I think this is short term. This give me a bit of a, a good habit. Yes. But I, do, I have a question. Uh, Please. I have to change my seats because I cannot sit on the floor. So I just said to a it is good that we can um, choose the positions that are most suitable to us. Yeah. I'm just wondering why do we start the body scans from the toes up rather uh, than from the top, like from down? No particular reason, and you can start from the head down. Um, I started from the feet up tonight because um, one full body scan does usually start from the feet, come up to the head and then back down to the feet. So that's one full body scan. And I did deliberately start with the feet tonight because I knew I'd get up to the face and then switch to breathing. So it seemed like a logical connection. But you're more than welcome to start the body scan wherever you want. Um, so there's, there's a couple of reasons we do the body scan. Is One, to check our posture, because sitting upright away from any back support rather than you know lounging uh, brings a certain amount of energy and sort of determination to our practice. And like I said, focusing on, a, on our body um, is a very tangible way of bringing us into the here and now. So rather than going straight to the breath, or straight to a visualization of your happy place or whatever other there might be. Focusing on the body, which we sort of live in every day, all day, um, really grounds us. And, and I use it to start every meditation session, no matter what I then go on to do. Mm. Yeah, but you can start wherever you like. Thank you for that. It's very makes sense about you talking about bringing that up and then we start with concentrating on the breath. 
So thank you for that explanation. No worries at all. We only keep it very short on these Wednesday nights because I know everybody's busy. Um, but yeah, try and even if you did that now every night for the next week, and I'll give you another little tip next Wednesday, you could add to it or replace. Yeah, whatever. Whatever you like. They're yours now to use however you want right, to. Thank yeah, thank you. I think it's so, so good. <laughs> You're very welcome. Thanks for joining me. I enjoy you. I enjoy you every week. Lovely. Thank you very much, Chef. All right. Have a good night. Thank you you have a great night too. Good night. Good night. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you for joining me on Facebook. I appreciate it. Any comments you might have, feel free to put them in the in the comments section or um I don't know what I was gonna say then. But yeah, you can send me a request, that's what I was gonna say. I'll see you next week. Hope you are both well. Bye-bye.